Hi folks, in this video I'm going to briefly cover the concepts you need to understand when driving loads directly with PV solar panels, whether it is a fan, a pump, a heating element, or a hot water heater, and so on. The number one problem faced when driving a load from a solar panel directly is impedance matching. Let's use a simple resistive heating element as an example. Just to be clear, impedance means resistance to current flow. Impedance, or resistance, is measured in ohms. By the way, solar panels also have resistance. It is called internal resistance, much like batteries. But solar panels have a relatively high internal resistance. This is why the voltage range is so wide on a solar panel and the voltage drops quite a bit under load. In order to drive a load such as a heating element directly from solar panels, it is helpful to understand what is called Ohm's Law. I call it Ohm's Formula because calling it a law simply blocks a person from thinking outside the box and doing any further investigation. The formula works great for normal electrical work, but there are times and places where Ohm's formula simply doesn't work, but that's outside the scope of this video. Let's continue with the example of a resistive hot water heater element. If you connect solar panels straight to the heating element, a voltage will be applied and some current will flow. But this is governed by the voltage of the solar panel and the impedance or resistance in ohms of the heating element. We can use a simple formula, which is sometimes called Ohm's Law, to estimate the performance of the solar panel and heating element. To make the formula easier to use and easier to understand, you can arrange it as follows. V is on the top, which represents voltage, I is on the left, which represents current, and R is on the right, which represents resistance in ohms. All three are mathematically interrelated. To use this simple formula, you simply identify which quantity you want to calculate. So if I pick V, or voltage, then that leaves I and R, and those are multiplied. Likewise, if I wanted to calculate I, which is current, then that would be V on top of R, so it's I equals V over R. In other words, you divide V by R. For DIY solar power enthusiasts, understanding this simple formula and learning how to apply it to your practice can make a huge difference and give you a much better understanding of what's going on and why certain things happen. Before starting, it's important to know what the solar panels you're using are actually capable of for power output. You need to know what their maximum power point voltage generally is under operation and what the current or amperage output is. It might be different in winter versus summer. For this example, let's say in good conditions our solar panels at their maximum power point are known to put out about 45 volts at 10 amps, which is about 450 watts. This math will change if you change the panels, for example by upgrading them or adding some extra panels. I found it's a great idea to go ahead and calculate the ideal impedance, or resistance in ohms, of the heating element beforehand. For our example, how many ohms would we need the heating element to be to get about 450 watts? We can use the simple formula R equals V over I. So we take our 45 volts that we know our solar panels create, and we know they put out 10 amps at their maximum power point, and we just take the 45 volts and divide that by 10 amps, so 45 over 10. And the result is we get 4.5 ohms. So our theoretical hot water heater element ought to be 4.5 ohms when hot. Now this is just on paper, it doesn't always work out that way in the real world, but you have to start somewhere. But here is where it gets tricky. The following points should be kept in mind. The heating element will probably increase its resistance as it heats up. How much depends on the type of element. And number two, the solar panel will vary its performance based on temperature, age, time of day, and season. Therefore, it's probably best to slightly unload the panel. This means to choose a heating element with a slightly higher resistance so that the voltage of the panels doesn't get pulled down quite as much. Here are some additional points to keep in mind. If the heating element has a higher resistance, it takes more voltage to drive the same current through it. Although it is not necessarily technically correct, I like to think of voltage as pressure in a water hose and current the quantity of water flowing through the hose. If there's more resistance, you get less pressure and therefore less quantity of water. Again, this is not necessarily technically correct, but it may help you visualize what's going on in the circuit. If it has a lower resistance and current flows more easily, less voltage is required to flow the same current. Keep the voltage the same, but lower the resistance, you get more current and therefore more power. All of this can be mathematically calculated using the formula given, at least up to a point. Calculations on paper do not necessarily reflect the real world, but they are a good start. It's all interrelated mathematically. If your heating element resistance is too low and it's drawing too much current, it will pull the solar panel voltage down below its maximum power point, maybe even to near zero volts, and you will get no power. 
So to drive a heating element directly from solar panels with good results, one must properly match the impedance or resistance of the heating element to the solar panels. It's simple math. One of the most useful things you can do with the knowledge presented here in this video is to run heating loads directly off of solar panels. It is clean, efficient, and well within reach of most DIY solar power enthusiasts. As of now, I use several direct PV solar electric space heaters to heat various rooms in my home. I've been doing this for years with great success. I wish this technology was more commonplace. If you're interested, I have some of my other videos about running heaters directly off of solar panels linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.